Wait, what? I thought suffering came from aversion and clinging, sometimes bundled together as attachment. Where does greed fit in? And what is the difference between three poisons and the unskillful roots and the three fires? Hi, it's Margaret Maloney and welcome to season three of the Death Dhamma podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so appreciative that you are part of my community. And yet, I seek not to be attached to the idea of the podcast or even to the idea of our community. And that's our topic this season attachment, clinging, and aversion. What happens when we really want something? What happens when we really don't want something? And what does it do to our suffering and dissatisfaction? Let's dive in and find out a little bit more with today's episode. In the episode just before this one, Dave Smith teaches us that the definition of attachment can be better understood when we consider it as it relates to greed, or the Pali word lobha. Behind our attachment, or one of the roots of our attachment, is greed. Let's just get some context. Let's step back, get some context, and then dive into these thoughts around greed and attachment. Our theme for this season is attachment. I know you know this. I'm just stepping through it. So this is what brings us suffering. To be human can mean to suffer. And ultimately, deep attachment can lead to deep grief. And attachment can make it difficult to have a peaceful death, right? If I'm hanging on to something and I'm having a hard time letting go and and transitioning. And that's how this topic relates overall to the Death Dhamma podcast. In a previous episode, we discussed how craving gives way to clinging. We crave forms, sounds, odors, flavors, tangible objects, mind objects. When feelings arise, cravings arise. There are these four kinds of clinging. Clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, clinging to rituals and observances, and clinging to a doctrine of doctrine of self. With the arising of craving, there's the arising of clinging. And we've been talking about some of these, you know, looking at situations. So for example, in a journaling episode, I discussed about, you know, having a certain self image and wanting to be perceived in a certain way. And that's definitely, you know, clinging to a view of self. Uh, we haven't done too much, I think, in terms of speaking to rituals and observances, But in a future episode, we will talk to something related. We'll talk about something that's related to that topic. So, you know, trying to get something we want and avoid what we do not want is suffering. And to put a fine point on it, if we are ignorant of what leads to our suffering, that is really leading us to suffering. That sounds weird, I think. So what I mean is, If we are walking around ignorant of the truth of suffering, that there is suffering and the causes behind our suffering, that in itself is what's going to cause us to suffer. So when we become aware and we follow the noble eightfold path, then we have a way forward. Now, awareness doesn't mean instant non-suffering, but when we're just bouncing around and we are unaware of the Four Noble Truths, we are definitely caught up in a world of samsara and constantly experiencing dukkha or dis-ease, discomfort, and suffering. But once we become aware, now we have the opportunity to I'll say remedy it, right? To remedy it, to live our lives in a way so that we can work towards the liberation from suffering. The three fires or the three poisons or the three unskillful roots of greed, hatred, and confusion, or sometimes people say delusion, these are behind our need for clinging and aversion. Now, this is a good place to acknowledge that in the teachings, you might hear the terms three fires, 
three poisons, or the three unskillful roots. They are all leading you to the same conclusion, greed, hatred, and anger, or again, you know, in confusion or delusion. These are the sources of our suffering. The term fires relates to the need to extinguish those fires or to stop fueling them. Upadana is a Pali word that means to cling or grasp or to fuel. We need to stop fueling anger or hatred, greed. We need to stop fueling confusion and delusion. And that is what will lead us to liberation. That corresponds to the fact that nirvana or nibbana, nirvana Sanskrit, nibbana Pali, is also referred to as the extinguishing of the flame. There are suttas that say roots, and there's the discourse on the fire sermon, which refers to the fires and the burning. The things that we are clinging to are a flame. There will be nothing left unless, of course, we let go of them and put out the fire. In the Angatara Nikaya, there are two mula suttas. Mula meaning root. You might recall that the Angatara Nikayas is numbered sections and that the teachings are, you know, in, I call them lists in books or lists of numbers. So there's, you know, the book of ones, twos, you get it. So there are two suttas that are referred to as the Mula Sutta. One is in the book or list of threes, and the other is in the book or list of tens. So now in the book or list of the set of threes, and in Nikara 3.69, you'll find this passage. Monks, there are these three roots of what is unskillful. Which three? Greed is a root of what is unskillful. Aversion is a root of what is unskillful. Delusion is a root of what is unskillful. And so we often also connect aversion with anger or hatred. And in a previous episode, we talked about aversion a bit. And why would aversion be, you know, anger or hatred. So if you think about it, when you don't want something, when you push something away and you like aggressively do not want something, that's usually coming from a place of dislike. So we could call that, you know, a, a form of anger, a form of hatred. I hate being sick. I hate not having money or, you know, whatever it is. So that's why you will sometimes hear aversion as one of the roots, but then you also may hear anger or hatred. In the book or list of tens, Anganakara 10.58 goes into more detail. And within this discussion, we find that desire and attention bring certain things into existence. Now, right now, I'm touching on this at a high level. When we do not escape suffering, we do not experience liberation When we do not experience liberation, we continue on in samsara, right? That wheel, some people talk about, you like you're on the hamster wheel of suffering and returning, suffering and returning. We, and, you know, continuing to be in dukkha then, right? Experiencing dukkha. We return until we stop creating karma or kama. So in terms of bringing certain things into existence, our ability to extinguish those three flames or avoid those three poisons, or cut off those unskillful roots, that's what's going to bring us to liberation. Now, unskillful. This is a useful and helpful word for us. It's not wrong to want something. And as you've heard in discussions with our teachers here on the podcast, you're going to have human relationships. You're going to want to eat and stay hydrated and sleep. It's the lobha, the greed. That is what brings us to unskillful attachment or unskillful desire. When you have enough and you want more, when you hoard things that could benefit others, specifically 
You're never going to use all of them. You're not going to go through everything you have, but you cling to it and you want more and you don't share or you come to want something so intensely that you lie or cheat or steal to get it. That is clearly unskillful. And that is greed. To be unaccepting of impermanence and therefore relentlessly wishing your time with your loved ones was unending or that your time being well went on forever. That is greed. The teachings do not say never want something. It's how you crave or create clinging. And for most of us on this path who are yet to be enlightened, me, we will probably have experiences of, of greed. I'm sure I have. And I know I have. And I'd like to say I'm never going to get greedy again, but I can't promise you that. It's, it's a goal. I'm working. I'm working on it, everyone. But I don't think I'm there yet. The way to overcome greed is generosity, or sometimes we say the antidote. The antidote to greed is generosity. Consider this passage from the Dhammapada. Conquer anger with lack of anger, bad with good, stinginess with a gift, a liar with truth. Also, this passage from the Samyutta Nikaya. What the miser fears that keeps him from giving is the very danger that comes when he doesn't give. If you don't give because you fear lack, you're going to experience lack, a lack of spiritual well-being, a lack of growth on the path. And generosity is one of the 10 paramis or perfections, qualities to be, qualities to be developed with the goal of reaching enlightenment, not for personal gain. So when we develop these perfections, our mind needs to be, we are doing this with the goal of liberation, not with the goal of recognition or experiencing some good material thing or something good for our ego in this world. So while we look at our own areas of greed and what is behind that greed, we can also give, we can practice generosity. And in this way, we can help to separate greed from when we want things and taking the loba out of attachment, and then we can be more skillful. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts, your suggestions, your own stories about attachment. So follow this link, I'm going to read it to you in a minute here, to leave me a 90 second message with your ideas and suggestions. You can go to https colon forward slash forward slash www.speakpipe.com forward slash death underscore dhamma underscore podcast. I suppose you could also just use your favorite search engine to say speak pipe death dhamma podcast. And there you can record an audio message for me and be sure to come over to margaretmaloney.com. That's M A R G A R E T M E L O N I.com and join the community. You've been listening to the death dhamma podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.